They see the night as an opportunity to rest their bodies, to give peace and comfort to their bodies. But the people of Allah, they see the night as an opportunity to give peace and comfort and rest to their hearts. <laughs> so to rest their hearts at night, to refresh and rejuvenate their hearts for the day which is to come, they do the zikr of Allah at night. Rasulullah told us about this night. He said, on this night, the deeds of the people, the servants of Allah, are presented before Allah. So the deeds which we perform on earth are raised and taken to the presence of Allah. So he is made, he is always aware that the deeds are presented to him. And his commands and his decrees are sent down to the people on this night. Rasulullah said, when my deeds are presented before Allah, I desire that I should be in a state of fasting. So he is pleased with me. Now you know that businesses conduct an annual audit of their transactions. They look at everything they have done through the year to assess their performance and see how they can best survive in the year to come. And all those transactions in which they find loss-making activity, they cut back on those. We made losses in this activity, we are going to get rid of that for next year, we want to do better next year. And anything in which we find profit, we will double that activity, because we want to do better next year than we did last year. So this night is a night to take account of our situation, to look upon the deeds we have done, and to see that time we have spent, that money we have spent, that effort we have spent, chasing worldly things which are futile and pointless and which will not give us anything in the long term and to cut back on those behavior patterns, to cut back on those that expenditure, to cut back on that passage of time that is being wasted. And a time to look at those things which Allah and His Messenger have told us to do for our Akhirah, which is the lasting investment, and to increase in those things which benefit us. So it is a time to take account of our situation. And what else? time to cleanse your heart because Rasulullah said that you, various people are not forgiven on this night. When Allah forgives all sins, some sins are not forgiven. Some things are an obstacle to your forgiveness. Shirk is one of them. Drinking alcohol is one of them. Committed adultery and fornication is one of them. But one of them which we are often guilty of is holding malice in our hearts against other people. And that is a very difficult thing to do cleanse your heart of those things. And Rasulullah said there is a piece of flesh in the body. If it is diseased, then the whole body is diseased. And if it is healthy, then the whole body is healthy. So the heart is the king. The heart is what commands all the other organs of the body. They say if your heart is not in it, you won't be successful at it. Because the mind, the heart is controlling everything. So you have to cleanse the heart. When you forgive someone, you may think about what wrong they have done towards you and think, how can I forgive this person? But then remember that the one who created that person is the same one who created you. You may hold a grudge against a person, but you can't hold a grudge against his master. If someone comes into your house and treats you poorly, you may hold a grudge against him. But if you know the one who sent him is someone you honor, you will not take it out on the servant, because you know who has sent him. All these people around you in life, they have all been sent here by the same master who sent you. So if you cannot forgive people for their sake, forgive them for the sake of Allah. Because He is the one who has made them, just as He is the one who has made you. And if this is what it takes to please Allah, then happily we, will, we should be prepared to do this for His sake. So we have to cleanse our hearts and we have to ask for His mercy. In the Dua of Mood, in the final Ramadan of the Wither prayer that you read every night, you say, But by then, you have reached the end of the day. The tongue is going. <laughs> the mind is already thinking about going to bed. Often we don't think about these words. This dua that we do at the end of every day, as we go into the night, is a very powerful dua. We hope for your mercy. And we fear your punishment. This is the behavior we have to engage in tonight. The Prophet Sallallahu said to say that Aisha radiallahu ta'ala that everyone will enter paradise only by the mercy of Allah. She said, even you, O Messenger of Allah, you have done so many good deeds and you have been made pure from sin. 
He said, even I will only enter paradise by the mercy of Allah. So it was the sunnah of the Prophet to Mustafa to seek forgiveness from Allah for himself and for his ummah. And it is his sunnah, Sayyidina Aisha says that when he left her, he left her hujra, her home, on this night of 15th Shaban. She went looking for him at night in the streets of Medina. Sayyidina Aisha is walking, looking for the Prophet who has left her house. Who would leave the house of Sayyidina Aisha She was the one he loved the most of his wives. He said he loved her the most. He left her at night on the night of the 15th of Shaban. And she finds him in the cemetery of Bathi, praying for the forgiveness, praying for the darajah of all those people who have passed away. So those of you who have relatives who have passed away, who have parents who have passed away, then remember them. This is one of the ways that you can benefit them after they have passed away.